I'm joined today here in the room by Dr Andrew Old, who's the Deputy Director General uh, at the Public Health Agency here at the Ministry of Health, and also to Whatawara Health New Zealand's Interim National Medical Director, Dr Pete Watson, who will be on the screen shortly after I've gone through some slides as part of my opening comments. So welcome again, thank you for being here. Today, just starting with a, an assessment of the current outbreak of COVID-19, how we're tracking against the modelling, and also some uh, analysis from our recent, uh, sorry, an update on the recent analysis of our deaths here in New Zealand from COVID-19. And then I'd like to briefly discuss or refer to a directive that I've made to certain local authorities regarding water fluoridation today. Pete uh, Watson will give an update on the health system's response uh, to the winter pressures, which we know are very real. And finally, Dr Old Andrew will speak to the country's monkeypox response uh, following, as you will be aware, the WHO declaring the virus and the current outbreak as a public health emergency of international concern. Turning to the COVID-19 numbers, today there are 8,730 new cases in the community with 808 people in hospital. This is day two of our new approach to reporting deaths that are attributed to COVID-19, either as the underlying or contributing cause. There are now a total of 1,427 deaths confirmed as attributable to COVID-19, either as the underlying cause or a contributing factor. And the seven-day rolling average of attributable deaths is now 17. I've got uh, some slides up here now to, to speak to, and you can see in this first slide that case rates are trending downward across all four regions in New Zealand. Uh, this finding is supported by what we're seeing from the wastewater results and the test positivity in our people being admitted to hospital. In the week to 24 July, the case rate from reported test results decreased by around 12% compared with the previous week. And pleasingly, we're seeing that case rate decline as well in our over 65s, who, we, who have had the highest case rates amongst our groups at the moment. And likewise, our hospitalisation rate to the end of last week uh, did decrease, but you would have seen that the numbers did go up over, again over the weekend. They've come down again now to just, uh, as I said earlier on, 808 people in hospital. Uh, this is our regional, uh, regional weekly hospital occupancy rates related to COVID-19. Uh, and you can see in at least three of those regions last week, they did level off. It, uh, so they're in some regions, uh, to Waipounamu in the South Island and to Manawataki, the Midland region, uh, they, they continued, they stayed steady or increased. Our third slide shows uh, an update on the different subvariants of Omicron, and you can see, uh, as expected, that the BA5 subvariant continues to become uh, the most dominant variant, and uh, as of the 18th of July, over, just over 60% of our cases were because of the BA5 variant, subvariant, and we will expect that to continue to increase, so we'll probably see an almost full takeover by BA5 uh, by the early August. A couple of weeks ago, I shared some initial modelling from the COVID-19 modelling Altera group that showed a possible, the possible size of this BA5 wave. The modelling has been updated with two significant new pieces of information. First of all, there is international evidence that suggests uh, a previous COVID-19 infection, in particular a previous Omicron uh, infection, provides stronger than expected protection against BA5 reinfection. And second, the modelling now accounts for updated data on second booster uptake and the expected future uptake. So the, the slide here shows COVID-19 hospital occupancy in the, model, in the updated modelling. We can see that while there is still a chance, and that is the, the grey bands show that hospital occupancy could still reach more than 1,000 occupied beds, we're tracking closer to a peak of 850, and we got close to that over the weekend. The numbers come down a bit. We know that hospitalisations tend to track about a week behind cases, and we have seen uh, the cases dropping. 
And similarly, while the seven-day rolling average of cases could reach a peak of 16,000 a day, the model now indicates that it is more likely to peak at around 12,000. And currently, as you know, we are tracking below that, and it looks like our case numbers are declining. What is apparent is that the worst case scenario that our modelers had suggested a couple of weeks ago with up to 1,200 beds occupied and over 20,000 cases a day is now highly unlikely. And I'm sure we're all relieved to see this. Uh, we're continuing to mount a robust COVID-19 response and I want to uh, thank everybody who is taking steps to protect themselves and their whānau, not least the people who are testing when they're symptomatic who are uploading their results and then, most importantly, are isolating and their family members are. This is almost certainly a key driver of this turnaround we are seeing and it's great to see, even this far into this Omicron outbreak, that so many people are still doing this. Just on to the data we've done looking at our mortality statistics and it, uh, we are still seeing quite significant numbers of COVID deaths each day. And we will continue to see uh, quite high numbers until case rates really decline quite significantly. To better, to better track the risk factors of dying from COVID-19, we've done some preliminary analysis of COVID-19 attributed deaths, and I just want to share one aspect of that for you now. It shows convincingly here in Aotearoa that getting boosted is one of the most important things you can do to reduce your risk of death from COVID-19 very consistent with the international evidence. Across the population, people not fully vaccinated against COVID-19, that is, they've had less than two doses, are six times more likely to die if they catch COVID-19 compared with someone who has had at least one booster dose. That's, a, that's once you adjust for all other factors. Now, for people under 60, this risk is even higher, more than 13 times greater for those who are unvaccinated or less than two doses compared with someone who's boosted. Now, many of those who've died under 60 have had underlying health conditions and getting boosted is particularly vital for those people. They will either be eligible now or will shortly be eligible for a fourth dose or second booster. Please do so. For those who died uh, who were between 20 and 60 years of age, we've estimated that around half of those deaths deaths could have been avoided if all those people had been boosted. We'll continue to update and make public those analyses as they continue. Currently around 25,000 New Zealanders on average become eligible for their second booster and our daily number of uh, boosters yesterday was around 11,000. So there are still plenty of people who are eligible for booster doses, that second booster, who can and should be going and getting it. And my message to those people is, please do so, it could save your life. Finally, uh, from me, a comment on community water fluoridation. Fluoridation is well proven to be a safe, affordable and effective method of preventing tooth decay that benefits everybody, but particularly children. Māori, Pacifica and our most vulnerable. Unfortunately, New Zealand has relatively high rates of preventable tooth decay with very significant inequalities. Today I have written to 14 local authorities directing them to fluoridate their drinking water supply. This is the first time that I've issued directions to fluoridate water since legislative changes last year passed responsibility for this health-based decision to this role, the Director General of Health. Uh, the time that each local authority has to fluoridate their water supply varies between six months and just over three years, depending on the circumstances of the supply currently. And these directions will take the proportion of New Zealanders benefiting from fluoridated water from 51% to around 60%. I'm very pleased to be able to do this in my last week in the job.